Okay, so now it's time to talk about the prereqs, setup of the environment, and installing the Google ADK. Right, so let's take a look. So I won't go too deep dive in prereqs because uh, they are quite repetitive. You need to have Python 3.9 or higher. You need to have Node.js NPM installed. We've done a lot uh, of, um, uh, say, uh, discussion around this. So I believe by now you already have that. We will be making use of UV, as you know. And the only important thing is you need to have a PayPal account with access to create tokens. So if you if you go to uh, PayPal.com, uh, you should be able to, um, you should have actually an access. You should be able to log into PayPal, give your uh, username, and you should be able to sign up to pay PayPal. It's, it's um, quite important. The other thing with PayPal is uh, that you should have uh, the authenticator set up as well because it uses two-factor authentication. So on your mobile, you need to set up uh, your two-factor authentication for PayPal and you should be able to log into PayPal. Uh, that's really it. Um, so from that uh, only, you will be able to make use of the developers.paypal.com uh, uh, and uh, you, there's no extra setup that you really need to do. So you should have the PayPal login with you. Uh, then we just need to create a project with UV. First create and initialize a project using UV. So let's take it one by one. So let's go to our Visual Studio code and we open and uh, we create a new folder. Let's say PayPal MCP ADK. So because we are using Google ADK, so let's create this folder and we open the terminal. The first and foremost thing we do is we do a UV init ADK projects, right? UV init ADK projects. UV init ADK projects. Sorry, UV init ADK projects. Okay, so all we are doing is we are initializing it um, and we say CD ADK projects. ADK projects. So once you are inside, you'll see that these directories are created for you. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to install uh, UV. Um, you know, we need to install the ADK. So the Google ADK, right? The software development kit or the agent development kit as we call it. So we say UV add Google ADK. So I'm actually uh, using a version uh, 0.5. Uh, because there are still some issues with the latest versions. Uh, once these issues are fixed, we can actually go ahead and use the, the latest versions as well. So this automatically creates a virtual environment as we know by now. And we create a new directory called uh, PayPal underscore agent, right? So that's quite important. You need to make a new directory. So basically it's a sub directory inside this. So we say make directory PayPal underscore agent, right? So now if you see my structure is like this. And now inside this, I should have this kind of structure, which is init, which is init.py, uh, agent.py and .env file, right? So this is the structure we need to create. So let's create the structure in the same way. So we have ADK projects, we have PayPal underscore agent. Inside that, we first create the file called init.py. So you go here, go to PayPal agent, say new, Say so it's slightly cumbersome in terms of uh, what uh, Google has done, but that's the kind of structure we need to follow, right? Very important because if you don't follow the structure, then obviously we can have a lot of issues. So next file I'm creating is agent.py, right? This is my agent.py. And the third file that I will create is .env, which will uh, actually have my Gemini um, API key. Right. So this is the third file I create, which is .env. And it also says, if you look at the documentation, that uh, the uh, that inside your init.py, you need to have this to invoke your agent, which is from dot import agent. Right. So this is quite important. Uh, so let's go to our init.py and put this uh, as well. And we 
save it right so i think now our structure looks good we have init.py we have environment file which we which we'll add as well in the next lecture i'll show you how the environment file looks like and then we'll have agent.py wherein you will bring your entire code uh, into into here as well so yeah in the next lecture i'll actually go through that and we'll try and understand the code itself so keep watching